Stephen D. Levitt, Freakonomics, a rogue economist explores the hidden side of everything. Ever wondered how incentives affect the world around us? Dive into the fascinating book Freakonomics by Stephen D. Levitt and explore the hidden side of everything. The summary delves into examples of how incentives can backfire, including the influence of mood, the role of experts versus lay people, and the internet's impact on information asymmetry. Be prepared to uncover the often counterintuitive realities of how we perceive and react to incentives, the true meaning behind statistics, and our misconceptions about causality and correlations. The book summary will guide you through these revelations in a clear, organized manner, with engaging language suitable for all age groups. The Incentive Puzzle We often see attempts to incentivize behavior, from parents rewarding their children to companies offering bonuses to high-performing employees. However, using incentives to influence behavior can be more complex than it appears. A study in Haifa, Israel, aimed to decrease late pickups at daycare centers by imposing a $3 fine on tardy parents. Surprisingly, this led to a doubling of late pickups. The small fine might have conveyed that the issue wasn't serious, but the key factor was that the financial disincentive replaced the existing moral disincentive of parental guilt. Parents could now effectively pay off their guilt with a few dollars, making them less concerned about punctuality. Moreover, the negative effect of the fine persisted even after its removal. This example highlights the challenges of introducing incentives, especially when they might replace existing ones. Be cautious of the potential for unintended consequences when attempting to influence behavior with incentives. Incentives and the honesty factor. People's reactions to incentives vary, primarily due to the influence of personal mood which can differ on different occasions depending on circumstantial factors. To understand this phenomenon, one can examine Paul Feldman's bagel business where clients were entrusted to pay by leaving their money in an unattended cash box. Feldman observed that honesty levels were impacted by factors such as weather, office morale, and global events, reflecting the context-dependent nature of incentives. Ever wondered why some individuals go to the extent of robbing banks despite facing severe potential consequences, while others don't? The answer lies in the fact that different people react differently to the same incentives. Remarkably, even a single individual's response to the same incentives might vary based on different occasions. Exploring this idea further, let's delve into the data gathered by Paul Feldman, who operated a unique bagel serving business to offices. He stationed an unattended cash box for customers to pay, and it became apparent that their honesty was influenced by personal mood, and in turn, the varying factors impacting their mood. There were several critical influences on customers' honesty levels, including weather conditions, higher payment rates on unseasonably warm days, and lower rates on unseasonably cold days. Holidays also played a significant role, payment rates were considerably lower during stressful holidays such as Christmas and Thanksgiving, while a more relaxed atmosphere saw a hike in payment honesty. Office morale, too, had its impact, employees from happier offices were more likely to pay. Notably, payment rates saw a shared increase in the aftermath of 9-11, which the author ascribes to a collective surge in empathy. In conclusion, incentives and honesty go hand in hand, varying in effectiveness depending on the changing global, local, or personal circumstances affecting individuals' moods. Incentives are context-dependent, what works under one set of circumstances might not be effective in another. Beware of expert information bias. There's no doubt that we all rely on experts from time to time, whether it's for legal advice, a big purchase or even selling our home. The expertise they provide can be crucial in navigating unfamiliar territory, but it's essential to remember that information asymmetry exists, and experts have access to far more information than we do. Sometimes, this can lead to them exploiting the situation for personal gain. A classic example is the real estate market, where agents have a wealth of knowledge on property prices and market trends. 
While agents are incentivized to obtain high sale prices, the financial benefit they receive from closing a deal quickly can supersede this. Studies have shown that when agents sell their own homes, they wait longer and achieve higher prices than when working for a client. So, before you take your agent's advice to accept the first decent offer that comes your way, remember that they might be prioritizing their own profit over maximizing yours. When dealing with experts, it's vital to maintain a healthy skepticism and be aware of potential information biases. Fears grip on decision-making. The fear of the unknown can be paralyzing, especially when navigating unfamiliar territory. Experts often exploit this fear for their own financial advantage. They might employ scare tactics, like convincing you to buy a more expensive product based on safety concerns or the fear of missing out on great opportunities. Social fears, such as appearing ignorant or dishonorable, can further aggravate the issue during face-to-face -face interactions. When you sense an expert manipulating fear-driven decision-making, take a step back, seek a second opinion, or conduct research to level the playing field. Recognize these situations and maintain a rational mindset to avoid falling prey to fear-induced choices. Leveling the insurance field The 1990s witnessed a remarkable drop in life insurance prices, all thanks to the advent of the internet and price comparison websites. These platforms made it incredibly easy for customers to compare prices from multiple companies within seconds, eliminating the tedious process of manual research. Since the policies were quite similar, expensive companies were compelled to lower their costs, thus reducing the overall price of policies. This revolution highlights the Internet's vast potential in dismantling information asymmetries worldwide. As consumers gained quick access to product and price-related information, the advantage held by experts was significantly reduced, resulting in a fairer and more transparent market for all. The Information Asymmetry Impact Knowledge gaps create powerful effects in the world of information asymmetry, causing changes in perceived value and assumptions. For instance, a new car's depreciation is often attributed to the buyer's uncertainty about the seller's motives and the possibility of hidden issues. Similarly, in the world of online dating, omitting a photo leads to negative assumptions being made about the user. Therefore, it is crucial to not only consider the information provided in transactions, but also be mindful of the information expected by the other party. Failure to do so might encourage unfavorable assumptions and lead to penalties for the seller. Unraveling Irrational Risk Assessment When evaluating risks, we tend to rely more on imagination than rational thinking, leading to an overestimation of certain threats. For example, due to media coverage, we may perceive plane crashes or gun crime as more frequent than they actually are. Furthermore, we often misjudge risks based on our perception of control, feeling in control, such as driving a car, creates a false sense of security, while feeling helpless, like on an airplane, heightens fear. To accurately assess and respond to risks, it's crucial to become aware of these biases and prioritize evidence-based data over gut reactions. Remember that true risks may not always align with our perceptions, and understanding the facts is vital for making rationally sound judgments. Debunking Correlation and Causation Washington, D.C. has three times more police officers and eight times more homicides than Denver. It seems intuitive to believe that more officers result in a higher homicide rate. However, this is a misconception, as we often falsely link correlation and causation. This flawed logic is evident in situations like money's impact on election outcomes. Although data suggests well-funded campaigns typically win, it doesn't necessarily mean that money is the driving factor for electoral success. In reality, supporters tend to back winning candidates, and additional campaign funds have minimal effects on vote percentages. Our tendency to assume causation between two simultaneous factors often leads to incorrect conclusions. Unmasking Hidden Causality Our instinct is to attribute cause and effect relationships between two events, typically leaning towards immediate reasons. In the late 1980s, crime rates in the United States skyrocketed, only to diminish dramatically in the early 1990s. 
Experts initially attributed this decline to an improved economy, strict gun control, advanced policing, higher numbers of police, and enhanced prison utilization. However, later analyses revealed that these factors had a minor impact on crime reduction. Instead, the critical element was the legalization of abortion in 1973, which allowed women to prevent the birth of potential criminals, those born into single-parent households and poverty. The moral is to be cautious about immediate explanations, as even experts can be misled by these deceptive links. In the summary of Afreakonomics, we learned how incentives affect human behavior in multifaceted and often counterintuitive ways, how experts exploit information asymmetry for their gain, and how the internet has impacted this dynamic. We also delved into how people misjudge risks and misunderstand causality, leading to inaccurate conclusions. Armed with this newfound understanding, let it serve as a reminder to approach marketing statistics and persuasive tactics with a critical eye. When considering incentives, make sure to weigh the existing factors and analyze the potential consequences. Finally, remember to question the presumptions of causality and challenge our natural inclination to focus on immediate, rather than remote, causes.